back to another episode of the Lightburn for Gaintree Crash Course. The last thing we're going to be discussing as part of the device settings is the scanning offset adjust. Now I'd encourage you to listen through all the way to the end the first time around, where I'll provide you some additional tips before you go ahead and do this on your own machine. I've left this for last as it simply requires more explanation and some testing, and will also allow you to tune your laser's output to be far more precise than it already is. This isn't something I can give you as a value and you can put in and it'll be perfect. You're going to have to take what I'm explaining here and apply it to your laser. These values are going to be completely different for everyone, and many diode lasers will have a faster response time than most larger CO2 machines. The reality is, if you're using a diode laser, you may not need this, but it's there if you need it. And if you're using a CO2 laser, in all likelihood, you might need this. Let's dive into this with some visuals to help explain what exactly it is we're looking to do here. Typically, we operate gantry laser machines at speeds too fast for our laser source to keep up with. This is especially true for glass CO2 laser tubes. We see this effect because the gantry has already changed direction before the tube can begin to fire, and there can be a delay from when the tube is being called upon to fire, and when the beam actually reaches the material to mark. In this first image, we can see the yellow line is offset to the right as the laser moves from left to right because our laser tube is firing late. In the second image, you can see the pink line is offset to the left as the gantry moves from right to left again, because the tube is firing too late and the gantry has already changed direction. In order to make up for this delay in our firing time, we need to apply an offset to the placement of our scan lines to make sure that the laser is firing at the appropriate time. The way this works is by actually shifting the odd and even lines placement in our file opposite of the direction of the discrepancy. For heavier corrections, you may even notice an offset in your laser controller preview window. A few basic parameters make up the offset adjustment variables. The first is the line shift, which is the distance between the odd and the even lines at the edge of the mark. Once we've handled our line shift, and our odd and even lines are even with one another, next is the initial offset. At times when there is an extreme line shift being corrected, this can cause a bordering or contour line to be misaligned from the fill engrave, and will need to be shifted left or right to be brought back into alignment. This may not appear until a situation calls for it, so what we can do is we can create a situation where this might occur. We can put an offset in place to make sure that any touching layers or contours won't be out of place from the filled area. We can easily test for this by adding a line sublayer to our existing fill layer to see if the ends of our fill are falling in the contour evenly on both sides. Initial offset won't always be needed, but if you find that the contour and the fill are not overlapping properly, you can add a negative or positive value to shift it left or right. Once corrected, the left and the right sides of each scan line should be falling in the center of the marked contour. The ability to effectively utilize both of these settings will really bring a pop of detail you might not be used to if you've noticed lines are just a bit off at the edges. Okay, so to get started with line shift. We're talking about small measurements here, generally fractions of a millimeter. So many of us in most cases will likely be doing this by eye and retesting until we're happy with the result. I'm going to show you how I do it and how I've made it easier for me. I hope that translates to being easier for you as well. I use a small digital microscope for this to really get things dialed in. That's not necessarily necessary. You could even use your smartphone and just zoom in with the camera if you're having trouble seeing it with your own eyes. And I'm going to be using my microscope to also show you the results of the changes that I'm making with my machine here. If you want to go that extra mile in getting the best accuracy possible, if you need a microscope to do so, I will leave a link in the description below to the microscopes that Alex has reviewed previously on the channel. So first thing I'm going to do, I've, I've made this design, and I've intentionally made it so that I have a 0.5 millimeter line interval. The reason why we're going with a 0.5 line interval here and bidirectional fill is A, bidirectional fill is going to help us see what's going on with the adjustment of the line. The line interval is going to allow us to separate the lines apart far enough in order to see the differences between the endpoint of start and finish. We need to use bidirectional and we need to use a large line interval in order to get those results that we need. Additionally, you're going to see five different color main layers here. The reason why we're using five different layers is because we need to differentiate different speeds. 
So we have a 100 speed, a 200 speed, 300, 400, and 500. Now what that allows us to do is gives us different data points so that we know how far the line shift is per speed. This is going to change the faster we go. The finer we go, the better it's going to be, but generally I find the best return on investment for time is going from one to 500 in 100 millimeter per second increments on a CO2 laser. If you're on a system like a hybrid servo system that you're going a much faster speed sometimes, you may wanna go from 100 millimeters a second all the way up to whatever your top speed is, like 1,000 millimeters a second. Now extending this testing methodology over to diode lasers, your effective speed range is going to be very different from a CO2 laser. If the effective max speed of your diode laser, for example, is 10,000 millimeters per minute, instead of doing jumps of 100 millimeters per second from 100 up to 10,000, you could do 500 millimeter per second jumps from 500 up to 10,000. Lightburn helps in making testing like this easier because you can use common values to do jumps and it will help fill in the gaps if you find yourself in between those values. So if, for example, you tested 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 millimeters per second, Lightburn will assist you in averaging out the correction in between those two values. Now that doesn't mean you want to test the lowest value and the highest value and let it average out the entire curve. That's not going to provide you a very accurate experience, but it does mean you don't have to pick and choose every value that you might use for a material. While testing every speed that you utilize while engraving would be the most precise, it's not entirely necessary with the way Lightburn does this, and it does make our lives easier in this way. Because we're just starting out here, we don't have any values to put in, so we can close that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is send this over to the laser, and I will show you the results. So as you saw, I went ahead and engraved that onto a metal business card. Now, the reason I did that is I needed something that wasn't going to cause splash damage or burn away if we hit it too hard. A coated metal surface on a CO2 is perfect because it allows you to see exactly where the beam is stopping because it's not going to disrupt the metal at all. And this is the top line of uh, 100 millimeters per second we did. Now you can see it started scanning from left to right on the top line, and then on the second line it went from right to left. That is the reason for the offset. Now basically what we're doing with the line shift value is it's moving the top line to the right and the second line to the left to average them together. This is very much magnified, so we're gonna be adding just a little bit. I'm thinking 0 0.05 millimeters for line shift on the 100 millimeters per second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the 200 millimeters per second line. Now we can see that's nearly double the distance. So we're gonna add a bit more in terms of line shift. Let's call it 0.1 for line shift on the 200 millimeters per second. And this is looking not far off from that too. So I'm thinking 0.1. And we're moving down to 400 millimeters per second, and that's about the same. And this is 500 millimeters per second. Again, about the same. So again, to recap, 100 millimeters per second, we're gonna try 0.05 for line shift. For 200 millimeters per second, we're gonna try 0.1. For 300 millimeters per second, we're also going to try 0.1. For 400 millimeters per second, 0.1 and 500. Now this is just a baseline test, so we're going to enable this and we're going to run it again and see how it comes out on the next pass. Some of these we may have to back off or we may have to add a little bit more, but that's just kind of my initial test to see where we're at and how much further or less we need to go on these values. When you submit these into your settings, as you can see they're saved, make sure you click OK and you're going to have to send this job to your laser again fresh because if you run the original file again it won't be using those offset values that you just saved into the file. So we're going to go ahead and send this again and we'll see you in just a minute. Okay now we're at the top of our card here and this is the 100 millimeters per second value. Now as you can see, it's it's almost there, it's pretty close. On average, we're, we're just about there. I think if we added just a little bit more, maybe 0.01, I think we would be on the dot. Moving down to the 200 millimeters per second. 
I think we're just about there. On average, we're pretty close. I think maybe we might have gone a little too far. We might back it down to 0.09, going down to 300 millimeters per second. Again, we're at 0.1 for this line offset. And again, this is pretty close. So I think we're okay with leaving that at 0.1 to be honest. Moving down to 400 millimeters per second. I think we're pretty much there. 0.1 I think I'm happy with. And 500 millimeters per second. Again, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so what we're gonna do here back in device settings is we're going to double click on the values that we wanna update and update those values. And I'm pretty happy with the rest of these values. Now what I'm gonna do is click OK. Now, if in the case that you're in the position where you need to retest it, you would have to send this again for another job, fresh the way it is, because if you run the job from the last file that you sent to your laser, again, it's not going to have these scan offset adjusts built into the file. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and send this again to your laser and run it again. Well, we've gone ahead and validated that and everything came out perfect. Now circling back for those of you who are having potentially a hard time tuning this in or have to go back and adjust values just a little bit, remember that the first, third, and so on odd value lines are going to be shifting from left to right. The even value lines are going to be shifting from right to left. The more value you add into the scan offset adjust, the more distance those are going to be closing in on each other. If you add too much, they will go past each other and invert from where they started. So you may have to dial it back if you find you've gone too far. The end goal here, ultimately, as you saw with my results, is you want those ends to meet up so that you have a nice flat starting point. Let's finish up strong with initial offset. I've gone ahead and prepped a second file with a line sublayer by just double clicking on the cut and layer area and adding a sublayer as a line. This will allow you to validate where your contour line will land compared to the engrave to see if you need to adjust your initial offset so they line up properly. You simply run it just like the prior test. The only difference is you are looking for both ends of the lines to fall on top of the contour line that wraps around the square of the lines perfectly without a gap. In my case, they were perfect and I did not need to adjust anything. However, I've intentionally added an offset to show you what it looks like when you need to adjust it inwards. It is the exact same process as we did before. The only difference is adding a negative value shifts the line to the left and adding a positive value shifts the line to the right. So my advice is measure the value if it's large enough and start with that and dial it in left or right with smaller values after testing. The process will remain mostly identical to the first half of this process. So once you've made it this far, you're basically a pro. If it's small enough where measuring is not realistic with the tools you have, you're likely going to be dealing with values smaller than one millimeter. So I suggest starting with very small values and retesting and viewing under a microscope to get it really dialed in. I can't suggest this enough. Due to the lack of burning and outward splash damage that doesn't occur with this type of material, it really makes anodized business cards a very easy solution for this. It makes it quick and easy. I hope this has assisted you in your understanding of the scanning offset adjust, and we've now successfully gone through all of the device settings for this episode of the Crash Course. If you'd like access to the scanning offset adjust test file that I've made here, it will be available in the description below, as well as available on lasereverything.net in the resources and download section. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Gantry Crash Course. If you got value out of this episode, smash the like button, let everybody know the content's great. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and if you're interested in seeing future episodes of the Crash Course or other fun content, hit that bell icon so you get notified as soon as it goes live. If you want to join the LE community or just hang out and chat, there's links to the Discord and Facebook group down below. You'll also find a link to the Laser Master Academy, whose members I'd like to thank for making this all possible. We love learning and sharing with you all, and we couldn't be here in this capacity without such an amazing community. We hope to see you over in one of our communities, and I hope you enjoy the next episode of the Lightburn for Gantry Crash Course.